Thank you for watching us today. My name is Rich Tarani. On our program is Par Gandhi, who is the Director of Field Marketing at Uyala. Hello, Par. Hi, how are you? Great. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to let you know that I really like the way your company name sounds and is spelled. Uh, so, I just want to throw that out there. We take a um, in it. Good, good. So, did you want to talk about how the, the name came about and then you can tell us a little bit about the company? Uh, well, company, company name, it's a, uh, it's a Telugu word. Um, for no specific reason why it's a Telugu word, uh, but it means cradle. So we like to think that we, uh, we cradle technology. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, do you want to give us a little bit more on, on what your company does in the market and how you help customers? Absolutely. So we are, Uyala is a end-to-end -end video management uh, tool. Um, we would be the place where you would um, take your content, so your video content, whether it be a media company or a non-media company, that's a corporation that wants to uh, promote just corporate videos or product videos, um, ingest the content into Backlot, which is our key product. Um, we would transcode it for you into multiple bit rates and qualities and, and streaming and streams. Um, and then we would be provide you the opportunity to distribute that to a new Yala player that is that you can embed onto your site, onto your blog. Um, we also have the ability to stream directly and out of the box right to iPhone, iPad, 3GP, uh, as well as um, over, the top, over the top providers such as Boxy and Roku. Okay. Well, I didn't know about those last two. That's yep. great. Uh, so how are you dealing with the challenge of uh, the various codecs and, and devices and, and the, I guess, the, the video streaming wars between H.264, now there's HTML5, and there's Flash. Uh, yeah, at, at the end of the day, we, we want, our, our, our perspective is that we want to make it extremely easy for, one, the content owner, right? If you want to upload content, you want to send content over to it, whether it be H.264 or WMV files or what have you, we'll take it, right? And we'll just make that as easy as possible uh, to, to ingest content into us. As far as the distribution and the consumption side, it should play everywhere, and it should take it, it should agree. do so w without any problems, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, so we distribute, like I mentioned before, we distribute whether you want to do on you know flash based via um, via a browser, right, on your PC, as well as uh, supporting HTML5. So if a consumer is watching it on an iPad or an iPhone, right, automatically do a player swap stream it via the, um, the iPhone uh, HTML5 stream. Um, in addition to that, we recently um, entered a partnership and developed technology to support uh, Microsoft Silverlight and streaming via Microsoft Silverlight, which is really interesting. We, d we did a test uh, a few weeks ago. It was a public test. It was on the web for the AVP, the Associate the uh, Volleyball Professionals, which had a big tournament in Hermosa Beach. They streamed everything with uh, multi-camera switching and um, smooth streaming that, that comes out of Microsoft directly to the, uh, the Silverlight player for Uyala. So uh, obviously uh, you're, you've got a solution for businesses, right? Mm -hmm. This is a, it's a business video solution. And you'll occasionally or potentially often go up against companies or go up against solutions that are, um, let's say, YouTube-like or um, a blog and, and, a, and a separate player like maybe a Vimeo. And there's a bunch of these consumer products out there and services that are either low cost or no cost. Yeah. And so the question I have is that if I'm, I'm watching this right now and I'm in an enterprise, why do I want to bypass those lower end solutions? Mm -hmm. and, and I shouldn't call one low end and one high end. I'll let you, you actually describe sure. it. Why would I want to bypass those uh, lower cost solutions mm -hmm. or no cost solutions and work with your company? Yeah, so uh, well, it's the management of it. Well, there's a couple answers there, but the, the, the ability to kind of easily manage your content through Backlot, um, Backlot, like I mentioned, is, our, is our, key f our product where you would be able to ingest content and you can set up categorizations, labeling, we call them labels, right? Very very similar to labels on Gmail, where you can um, categorize and associate multiple labels. So then it allows you to associate those labels with different channels. So you embed a channel player into your site, and then you can com fully control and manage what goes into that player without having to re-embed into, uh, into the site. You fully manage that through Backlot. Um, in addition to that, there's a, uh, there's a variety of tools that we offer, again, right out of the box, such as the analytics um, the, the analytics engine. We call it actionable analytics, but it's a deep uh, set of um, data that allows you to see 
what content is being what content is being viewed um, where is it being viewed on what device is it being viewed how is it being shared is it being shared on Facebook is it being shared uh, on YouTube is it being right. shared on uh, by a Twitter right and so we're giving you all these analytics behind it right um, and then there's the the um, the ability to monetize that content right <clears throat> um, some of the other players, that they may and they may not have um, monetization integrated directly in, but we, we integrate with uh, over 20 different ad networks and ad servers, so that way you can grab ads from you know, Google Video or, um, or um, Yumi or Tremor Media, and you can put those ads into your content directly, right, through Backlot, very simple slide ruler type of interface. Where do you want to play? Do you want an in-stream ad? Do you want um, do you want an ad thirty second in? And you could apply these rules to a multiple pieces of content rather than even individual as well. And so you want a broad set of rules that applies to um, to people that are viewing your content in the United States through a specific channel, right? right. They're going to get this type of ad set rules, right? Versus international viewers, they might get a different sure. set, right? And then working with the ad, uh, the ad server itself, and the ad server would do the uh, any kind of geographic targeting or demographic targeting that you had associated with it. So you actually are going to be able to generate revenue mm -hmm. from the ads as opposed to allowing a uh, third YouTube. party such as a such as YouTube, Google, to, to pick up the revenue or a Vimeo or whoever else. Yep. Uh, and you also have much more granular control over the ads that show up. So not only you get you have to get control when you upload to a site that, that's not yours, like a YouTube, but mm -hmm. um, you now, with, with your platform, can, can keep the control down to the point where different ads are shown for different people in different countries and mm -hmm. different, different areas. Yes. So some of the benefits. Mm -hmm. Cost, uh, how, how does your company uh, companies products compare yeah so we have a multiple uh, a few different packages we do have the self-service type of uh, package which starts out at, you know at a, at a minimal uh, cost and then you increase uh, increase the package based on the the amount of usage the amount of content the amount of bandwidth that you want um, as well as the number of accounts sub accounts that you might want and a large organization might have you know an admin with you know certain users within it that that, you know, that control specific content. As far as costs go, it's a combination of platform fee, so access to the management tool and and uh, the ability to transcode the content <coughs> and put it into our system. But then uh, on the latter side of it is actually a streaming fee as well. So it's a per gigabyte uh, cost. Okay, so similar to what you would pay if you hosted it yourself. Yeah. Really? So, okay, but you, now you're getting all of this, this really cool business video management functionality. Mm -hmm. uh, are there particular case studies that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we work with a, a, lar a, a large number of organizations. Um, the, on the corporate side, uh, we, we work with, say, Dell. Dell Computers is an organization that, that streams a lot of their support and training videos through us. So um, by doing so, they're able to um, understand where their audience is, how much of that audience, uh, how much of that content is actually being viewed. Part of our analytics suite is an actual consumer or viewer engagement report. So it actually, it, it charts out um, second over second how much of that video is consumed, where there's drop off, where there's maybe a spike as well, because that way they can go back into their product, uh, I'm sorry, their, their, their production team and, sit and understand, okay, well, this type part of like seconds 20 through 30 of a two minute video, everybody fast forwarded through, excuse me, they fast forwarded through. And so this is a, a piece of the content that maybe we should just edit out or as we produce new videos, we should just, it's, it's not interesting, right? And that's where the big, the drop off, off. as well as on the, on the, um, the, uh, on the media side, understanding how ads impact consumer engagement as well. Are you getting big drop-offs because right. of ads? Right? And so you can adjust that to, one, maximize consumer engagement and get them to sit through and, and watch the entire stream, whether it be a four-minute video or a 30-minute kind of long-form content, as well as balance that against uh, maximizing your revenue. Another uh, case study is um, Telegraph Media. Telegraph Media out of the UK, um, a great partner of ours where they are ingesting content uh, very quickly. They've integrated Backlot with a, um, their back, uh, the back end um, uh, 
content management and workflow engine, eScenic, and so, um, so it basically streamlines the content as it's ingested into Backlot, add the, add the meta tags, uh, metadata and the tags and so forth, push it through eScenic, and so therefore the editors can go approve, publish, and send it out to their website kind of in a, in a, in a very seamless workflow. Um, and so, and then obviously the uh, the analytics or the ad sales teams can go and and place the right ad set rules around it as well. And you have uh, products now that work on the iPad and the iPhone, right? I, I do specifically uploading. I saw on the iPhone. Yeah, um, and so this is Uyala Direct is what we call our iPhone uploader app. And so basically, we we, we see this in a number of different use cases. But uh, say if we take journalism. If they, uh, a reporter is out on the site and they want to get video content up into the system and out published very quickly, and so they would just take a video on their iPhone like they would normally do, pop that, open up their iPhone um, uploader app, which is Uyala Direct, pop it into their Backlot account, uh, and then from the time that it's in the Backlot account to getting it onto the site, it would just follow their normal workflow. Right, and so it could be just very automated new content that comes up, you know, through the uh, through Uyala Direct gets published immediately sure. to XYZ channel. And do they have a an option to uh, lower the uh, the bandwidth amount? Like, do they compress the video, or does the software compress the video before it uploads? Um, it uh, it it doesn't compress the video. I don't know the technicals behind it, but. Um, but it, it, we, we've tested on a number of uh, Wi-Fi as well as, say, um, the AT&T network, and it is uh, very quick. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. fantastic. Well, thanks for coming on the program today and uh, letting us know what's up. Hopefully, we'll uh, have you back soon to hear how you're progressing. I appreciate it, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.